Hello, my name is Dr. Steve Kopetsky, a preventive cardiologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And here is another one of our episodes of Preventive Cardiology Podcasts. I'm very happy to introduce my colleague, Ms. Alicia Mickow, who's one of our advanced nurse practitioners, very active in our lipid clinic. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you. Nice to be here today. And we'll divide this up into two segments. The first segment uh, now will be on uh, the statins, how to choose d options when you're statin intolerant, and what are the side effects of some of these newer drugs. The second portion, which will be a later date, will be the side effects of these newer drugs. And that's one of the reasons we have statin <laughs> intolerance is uh, there are side effects to these drugs, and then the barriers to prescribing those drugs. So Alicia, we do have you know some wonderful statins for the past 20 plus years. Um, and we have a lot of non-statin medications. Can you just run down some of these medications for us and uh, you know how they're different from the statins? Absolutely. So there's Propatha or Prelovent, maybe better known as the Evolocumab and Aralocumab, have been around about nine years now. They're injectable medications that are dosed every two weeks at home by our patients. Um, they have Their mechanism of action is the IgG2 um, binds with a PCSK9, which prohibits the LDL receptor degradation, allowing for more LDL uptake um, in the liver cells. Um, like I said, dosing every two weeks at home, which is kind of nice than uh, compared to some of the other like statins on a daily daily basis. Some patients do like that, um, but that's, that's one option. It's been around a bit longer. Um, there's two new options, newer options. Um, Inclusoran, maybe some known as Lexlexvio. It's another injectable medication that's been around a couple of years. It's given every, you know, three doses the first year, so even less frequent than the, the, the PCSK inhibitors. Um, given at an infusion center or at a clinic base versus at home like the other injections. Um, this mechanism of action is a little bit similar, but a little bit different. Um, Double-stranded interfering RNA breaks down the PCSK9 um, through mRNA, um, through the mRNA, which increases um, LDL receptor um, recycling and LDL uptake. Um, that one, the initial, the initial first year, the patients are getting a dose initially once insurance approves. The second dose three months later, and the third dose is six months after that. Mm -hmm. And going forward, every six months going forward for subsequent years, so twice a year eventually. Um, certainly, it's a nice perk for patients to have less frequent dosing. Um, another option would be um, bemidoic acid or Nexlatol. It's, it's a pill form given in daily dosing at home, much like other you know, statin medications. It is um, mechanism of action is an um, ACT inhibitor, which slows down LDL synthes synthesis. Um, again, daily dosing. Certainly, there's that's like the, the three big ones we're using at this point, along with historically the azetamide that's been around a bit, a lot, a bit longer. Very good. And so the injectables, uh, to be clear, those are all sub-Q injections, is that right? Correct. So they're all different. How do you choose which one to use once someone is statin intolerant? That's a great question. I really have make it about the patient. I have to have a good conversation with them of the rationale why we want to put you on the different medication, whether they're important, the, me you know, the mechanism of action, the benefits, along with lowering the cholesterol levels, the, you know, pleiotropic effects that are in place from these medications. Want to prevent them from having a heart attack or, or a cardiac event or a, a secondary intervention if they've already had inter, you know, a disease in the past. Um, it's really just a conversation to give them the options. And I kind of talk through the typical steps. I talk through insurance approvals. I talk about potential side effects and efficacy rates of these medications before, and then help make a sure decision with, with patients. And then the you know, statin intolerance is... Uh much more prevalent than the original trials showed. Yeah. Let me ask you, how do you define it? And then how many statins do you usually give before you say, okay, this this patient, we just can't keep giving them statins? Yes. I usually try at least two. I, you know, you talk to the patients and my experience in the in this clinic with trialing at least a second one after a good washout period in between, maybe trying less than daily dosing, um, just kind of work for the method that try those different things first, more conservative measures, certainly. But if, they, especially if they have a higher risk or have disease already, I'm more inclined to jump to these other more aggressive medications um, rather than keep trialing, you know, multiple stents down the road. Sure, makes sense. And then you mentioned a washout. What's an adequate washout period before you'd start another statin? Yeah, I typically like to have a good four-week washout to really make sure we're not overlapping side effects. 
It could be residual from the previous medication that was trialed. Certainly. And you also mentioned you you are open and the guidelines are starting to imply that uh, less than daily dose. Correct. Uh, do you Are you a three times a week person, a once a week person? How do you approach that? I kind of make the you know, talk with the patient about that option as well. I, you know, so we can go down to once a week, but if you want, if you're willing to try twice or three times a week, I'm really kind of work with what they're comfortable doing. As you may know, is patients who are, are stand intolerant have had any side effects. They're really reluctant to try other medications again. Mm-hmm. And what if a patient says, "Gee, I, I can take it for a couple of months, and then the statin starts to bother me"? Is that different than the patient that says, "Gee, I take one pill, and or two pills, and I get into trouble"? Certainly, we have talked about that a lot. Um, is it really the true statin intolerance? It's not classic by any means to have that two-month um, symptom-free and all of a sudden have the side effects present. But I always have to trust the patient, and this is how they're responding. And I don't want them to I want them to be compliant with the medication I'm providing, prescribing. So if I, I work with them, and really, you know, if they're not willing to continue on, I, I'll stop and try something different. Certainly, you have to get their buy-in. Good, good point. Yeah. And then you mentioned azetamibe. Do you use that in everybody early on uh, after the statin, or do you add it in later, or how do you do that? Certainly, it, it, it's kind of depend on where their LDL is at on their maximum tolerated statin. Mm-hmm. If we're looking at just a small bump in our decrease that we're still looking for, I might add that as that might have been at that point. But if we're still quite a ways away from gold, depending on their situation, their risk, I may jump to more of the um, more aggressive therapies at that point. I uh, mean, the injectables or correct. the lipidemic yeah. acid. Correct, correct. And, and you're, do you find that the uh, patients will sometimes say, I, I want to stay with pills or I want to go with injectable or, or oh, you yes. know, how do you, how do you kind of uh, manage that? Again, it's that conversation with the patient. I really want to, if they're comfortable, if they're not going to take the injection, I'm not going to prescribe it for them. Um, it, if, they're, if they're afraid of it, um, they have fears of needles, whatever it may be. So we definitely have that conversation and navigate what they're comfortable doing, whether it, if they're willing to try the injection, they may be better served by the um, enclosure van that is given at the infusion center currently. Um, for this, don't, they don't get the injection themselves. I'm open to that versus the, the, the fear of the self-injection may be part, part of the problem. Yeah, certainly. And then the other issue about the statins, uh, are you finding any difference in the statins in terms of their lipophilicity or or uh, those type of uh, factors or the, you know, the length of uh, their half-life? Does that seem to matter much or is one better than another? You know, it really is individualized to the patient and how they respond. And I can have one patient or two patients side by side who have tried the same medication and have completely different responses from them. So I really just have to work with the patient to say, um, what is, you know, let's try one for you. And I can't predict how you're going to respond to a different statin or other medication, but it's unfortunately trial and error at this point. Have you found any difference with uh, family members? I mean, if you say, gee, does your brother or sister take this and which one do they do best with or yeah. which one gives them side effects? Absolutely. I definitely try to run that, you know, look at that family history as well. If there's been uh, the um, intolerance, I will talk to them about what their relatives do take and maybe try that one first or, or a secondary if they've had a good success in other people in the family. With the, this day and age that patients can ask their siblings questions just while they're in the office with you and text, oh, it's really uh, it's really great. I sure can. And then is there any type of statin intolerance that um, you tend to uh, choose a different drug for? Meaning if someone has myalgias versus, uh, you know, brain fog or uh, diabetes or even, you know, rhabdo or something. Certainly. I tend not to, to certainly not even try a second one if it's the rhabdo. I don't definitely, I definitely just stay away from statins altogether. Um, even with some, you know, liver enzyme elevation, I may stay steer clear of any other statins going forward and kind of jump to the other um, injectables. Perhaps you should kind of again by the conversation with the patient what they're willing to try, but really to stay away from those other ones if there's more significant side effects. And uh, and so the the myalgia is the most common effect. Uh, there's no really no single drug. Uh, what about, I guess, the lipid, if the uh, liver uh, issues, uh, you tend to use patavastatin more? Or? Certainly, that is, I, kept, I have in the past, correct. That's definitely a reasonable option. Um, but again, if some people are still afa- afraid you know, to try another one. So it's it's that conversation with the patient um, is really kind yeah. of the forefront of how this I navigate my patient's care. Oh, great. So you have found that patients... Um, tend to steer away from the statins uh, more towards the newer drugs. There's always uh, always that new drug uh, thrill and the aura of 
great benefit, maybe not so much side effects. Correct. Well, uh, this is a great conversation about the the statins, the non-statin medications, and you know when to use which. Uh, just to summarize, you you try at least one or two statins. Past that, maybe not that much benefit. Uh, try to give them a daily or even less than daily dose to see how they tolerate it. Lower dose, uh, maybe a less frequent, and maybe add in a zetamibe. Unless they have a huge uh, number, they're trying to you're trying to get under control. You'll go to the injectables a little quicker, and always have a nice open conversation with the patient. Let them be part of the decision making process. I think that's just great advice. Absolutely, so, uh, it's been great having you here today. And and next time we talk, we'll be discussing the next steps with the side effects of the newer drug, some of the challenges with giving it and uh, the challenges with getting reimbursed uh, for it. So, Excellent. Ms. Mikow, it's been great having you today, and thank you so much. And we look forward to visiting with all of you uh, out again. Bye-bye.